Hey there, marketing analytics students. In this brief video, we're going to do an introduction to price bundling, a common technique used in marketing and something that we often are concerned with when we want to engage in pricing optimization. First of all, what is price bundling? It's so pervasive, uh, you may not even realize it has its own term. Consider these typical day pass prices for Disney's two Disneyland resort areas. Each one will typically cost about $117 a day. Alternatively, of course, you could buy the single day park hopper ticket where the purchaser can now bounce back and forth between the two parks at their own whim, and that ticket costs $180 per day. This is an example of price bundling. Here's another example of price bundling. A small business that sells office furniture, such as a Herman Miller chair for about 500 bucks, an adjustable desk for $700, and an adjustable monitor stand for $200, some sort of ergonomic bundle kit. If there was a special deal where you could buy all three for $1,100, there again, you have a price bundle. Price bundles are everywhere. Quick service restaurants, internet packages and telecom packages. So why do marketers engage in this price bundling exercise? Well, there's a variety of different motivations and some of them aren't directly connected to immediate uh, maximization of profits. For example, it may be because the marketer is focused on improving overall customer satisfaction or experience with a core product. So a marketer who sells high performance video game laptops might recognize that any purchaser of said laptop would need a high performance gaming mouse to get the most out of the laptop. And it's a relatively low cost add on. So they add that into the product itself to help ensure that the customer stays satisfied. Other cases, we do price bundling because we want to clear excess inventory of poor selling products. So what we're essentially doing is we're using the customer as a way to uh, efficiently deplete our excess inventory of a product that we don't think we can sell. Other cases, we're playing more of a long-term game here where we're trying to initiate customer trial of a product that they might not yet be interested in. When picking up a new Verizon wireless package for free, Disney Plus is bundled into the, into the actual package. Uh, but the real intention here is less about price bundling and actually selling Disney Plus, but rather it's getting people to use Disney Plus, become familiar with Disney Plus, and enjoy using Disney Plus, so that after one year, they can uh, consumers will start paying for it on an ongoing basis. However, the key motivation of most price bundling exercises in marketing, and the focus of this introduction here, is that we're trying to maximize sales and profits by getting customers to spend more money than they otherwise would have. So let's offer a couple illustrations of when mixed price bundling works to maximize our profits. For the moment here, let's just imagine that marginal costs of selling products is equal or trivial. So let's imagine we have three different customers and we know how much they value two different options that we might sell at a baseball game. We might sell a beer and we might sell a hot dog. Customer A values the beer at $12 and the hot dog at seven. Customer B flips. The beer is only worth $7 and the hot dog's worth 13 And customer C values both of them quite high. Now, if we just do a la carte pricing and we set the price to $10, we can quickly calculate consumer surplus and then use that to inference what the consumer will do in terms of actually making a purchase. If our beer price is $10 and the customer values it at 12, they have a surplus of $2 and we assume they'll make a purchase. They won't buy the hot dog because it doesn't leave them better off than just keeping the $10 in their pocket. Customer B does the opposite and customer C buys both. In total, we make $40 of revenue. We sell two beers and two hot dogs. Now let's consider the same scenario with the same customers and their valuation, but this time we have a mixed price bundle. We've added in a dog and brew special for $16. Now we can see that customer A actually purchases the dog and brew special because the surplus for that is $3, which is greater than their surplus had they just bought the beer. Customer C buys the dog and brew special because remember they were going to buy the beer and hot dog anyway, but this time they're very happy because they saved money. We're also happy because our total revenue in this scenario is $48. The bundling enticed people to buy products that they otherwise would not have purchased. Let's lay out that logic just one more time. So when does price bundling really work for marketers? It really depends whether most of the customers tend to have positive correlations or negative correlations with their valuations of the products that you're offering. Notice in the far two left columns, we have the product A and product B valuations for these four different customers. 
Our price for the products and potential bundle is the same, of course, for all of them. $75 for product A, $75 for product B, and $120 for our, our price bundle. Based on the valuations that we know exist for the uh, customers and the price that we're charging, we know what their consumer choice would be. All three, the first three customers always purchase the bundle because it leaves them the best off. Their consumer surplus is highest. On the other hand, if we entertained a scenario where there was no bundle, the first customer would only pick product B because that leaves them $25 better off. Customer two would pick A. And the third customer again would select option A and B because even though there is no bundle uh, option, they are best off when they purchase the a la carte options individually. Now let's see which scenario leaves the marketer better off. Notice that the first two customers tend to have a negative correlation between their valuations of the products. With the price bundle in play, the revenue to the firm was $120 for each customer, which is superior to the revenue to the firm if no bundling option existed. However, customer three had a positive correlation with both of the products. And in this instance, they purchased the bundle, which drove $120 of revenue to the firm, but the marketer is rather sad here because if they had only offered the a la carte options, this customer would have in fact purchased each one individually and the marketer would have made $170. Whether or not price bundling makes sense for the marketer is really a function of how people value and the relationship between those valuations of the products that you're offering. Other broad strategic considerations aside, Marketers should only engage in bundling when it generates greater sales or profits than by not bundling. However, establishing the correct bundle prices can be immensely challenging. If you set the price discount for the bundle too small, it will not entice hesitant buyers to open up their wallets even more. It'll be like you just had a la carte options. If you set too large of a price discount, it lowers the price paid by already willing buyers. And as typical in complex decision scenarios, Managers often just resort to simple rules of thumb for mixed price bundling, such as our company always just takes 20% off or 10% off, or in this industry, we usually offer 30% off for a price bundle. This is despite there being ample analytical tools that help facilitate setting these prices just right. There are some analytical challenges with mixed price bundling as well. First, most mixed price bundling optimization tasks require the ability to know or reasonably estimate how all of your customers value each of the individual products that you intend to offer within the bundle. In addition, it can be com computationally complex to calculate the optimal price bundle levels. It is the type of optimization problem that's often nonlinear and not smooth, meaning we have to watch out for local maxima. Also, if we're not cautious when we program our mixed price bundling optimization problem, we might wind up with the algorithm suggesting some absurd price bundling options. Notice how the TV and phone deal is actually cheaper than one of the individual options. In the example on the right, the bundled version of the product actually costs more than the individual a la carte options. Both of these price bundling options don't make any sense and we don't want to apply those in the real world, so we need to make sure that our optimization algorithm accounts for that. In the next video, we'll present a mini case using an Excel spreadsheet model to optimize our mixed price bundling in order to maximize profit for a small business.